and I got paired up with two popular girls in the school. I won't name who they are, but essentially we went through this entire course. I got fucked, by the way. I got fucking destroyed by these two women. And um, especially on the runs, I was fucking breaking sweats. And I was like, <gasps> and then both of them were just speeding speeding i tried to catch up i couldn't and um a specific part of it that really really delivered the trauma was when i was doing push-ups when i was doing push-ups with the two popular girls there was a third sitting on a bench and i couldn't do much i couldn't do much bro the girls beat me on this one bro it couldn't be done how you doing bro it is currently evening right now in the uk there's a bit of rain in the background I'm not sure if you can hear that and uh, i just finished a day of college about two lessons of 130 minutes each this video is really about college and its effects on self-improvement my business my habits my diet my gym my time with family Mainly my mum, because like my family's back in Malaysia. But college has its benefits and its downsides to my journey on self improvement. And I think probably the biggest downside is, of course, time and the fact you have to fucking walk twenty, thirty, forty minutes to this school, do some lessons, have a massive break for no apparent reason, and then do another lesson and then come back home. And then you get set work that honestly doesn't take that long, but it saps your mental energy and you're afraid. You have this initial fear that you get from the teacher saying, oh, you have to do this by next lesson and next lesson is literally one day away. And that just, whenever I try to prioritize my own work, right? My own business work before my schoolwork, it, I still have this thought in the back of my brain, oh, I should probably do the uh, schoolwork first uh, in case I get super tired later on from doing my high demanding, challenging, that will actually bring me out of the rat race tasks. Fuck, I lost my train of, train of thought, I'm sorry. I should, I get this shitty feeling in the back of my brain telling me I should actually just get rid of the school task first and then focus on my thing. But then that would sap my mental energy. So it's a whole bunch of bullshit, basically. It's, there's a lot of things that cut into each other and it's just not convenient. That's the best way I can put it. And as for gym, obviously the time's fucked. Um, I gotta eat like, two hours at least two hours before the gym for a significant like boost in strength and e eating two hours before the gym gives me a feeling <coughs> pardon me it gives me a good whole feeling to push the weight and it honestly boosts my strength by like 30 40 percent that is the power of eating before but then school does not allow that or should i say college college does not allow that because college it's inconvenient to eat you you want to bring your pack lunch right but then your bag is so heavy for your laptop and all of those fucking shitty textbooks that oh it's just there is no real way for me to get the nutrition and the carbs almost before the workout because I'm either in lesson, walking back home, or just like, I can't really bring packed lunch as well, and I can't like buy the things nearby, because honestly, that is such a waste of money. And now I'm a strong advocate for abundance mindset, and um, I don't like the scarcity mindset, but honestly, bro, <clears throat> I just don't feel like it's the best choice to buy nearby food because if you look at that shit in the long run sure you'll be saving yourself like a back fucking your back breaking from uh having pack lunch or uh you'll be actually going to the gym on time i know i know it sounds like it does have a good return on investment but 
look at the food we're eating nearby. The food we're eating nearby is cafes, so carbs, sandwiches, salads, a fucking portable pizza van. It's not exactly the ideal condition, ideal place for feasting for a person on self-improvement. So it doesn't really fit a person like me who values his diet, values, uh, has the ketogenic diet plus carnivore plus a little bit of carbs. And then it's just, it doesn't fit. And um, that is basically a summary of my complaints. Obviously, there's more like, oh, my habits are gone, bro. I, I have my habit track is fucking gone. All right, it's it used to be so consistent during the holidays, but it's it's gone, bro. It is gone. And then, fuck what else? The books as well. The books I couldn't, I can't, I don't have time to read books anymore. Sure, you can argue there's breaks. The longest break I have between lessons is actually two hours and thirty. But to find a solitary good space to work is in the library. But then in the library, motherfuckers are shuffling around because it's so fucking packed and they're shuffling around. This sounds like me being a bitch, right? Oh, just fucking work. Someone's complaining next to you. Someone's shouting next to you. Just deep work. Don't be a pussy. I, I know this makes me sound like a pussy, but I can focus. I can focus in shitty environments. I can focus in a cafe. I can focus in literally the school cafeteria where people are walking around shouting, still playing. And I can do that. But is it the most efficient? And if it's not efficient, why do it at all? Why not just find a extremely hyper-focused time? A time where maybe it's 5 a.m. in the morning and you woke up early before school and you walk, you have some coffee, some ketogenic butter, uh, fuck, what was it called? MCT oil in the coffee, right? And then you go back upstairs, chug that shit, get to work in a solitary silent environment and then honestly i say that's about two times more productive than working in a school cafeteria and uh, now what else what else is a dis disadvantage of school or should i say college Do you know what? We'll, we'll go back on that point if I think of it. So let's uh, talk about the advantages. Now, the advantages are quite clearly one strong advantage, only really one strong advantage, and that is socials. The social part of practicing your charisma, your leadership, your influence, your small talk skills, your your threshold of how much you can handle, the threshold of how awkward you can be, the threshold of how comfortable you can be in your own skin when you're surrounded by people you don't know or just there's some hot woman next to you, okay? You can, by going to this college, you can also increase this threshold so let's say you were this um fucking basement dweller video game addict you jerked off the porn your threshold would probably be shit you'd probably just go back to you probably want to locate your discord your discord gamer friends at your college if you have them there and uh, you probably like Hide in the toilet, text them, uh, hide in a corner in the main break space area, text them, oh, where, 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 where are you? Where, where are you? Where are you at? That is probably what you would do. And that is what I did once in um, secondary school. But I have noticed a significant 
increase in my threshold and whether I like it or not, it's whenever you increase this threshold, right? It gives you a like it gives you two feeling. It gives you a feeling of yes, I'm the fucking man now. I have so much confidence. I'm so good. And then it gives you a tired feeling. And then spe specifically when you're sitting on your sofa, you go back home, took a shower from the gym, and you're just relaxing on the sofa. You're comfortable now, right? And then you think back to this uh, situation where you were challenged. You were a little bit outside of your edge as a man. You were a little bit outside of your comfort zone. Perhaps you were sitting next to a um, pretty attractive woman. Perhaps you were sitting on a table of complete fucking strangers. You think back to it. You're sitting on your sofa. You think back to that moment. And you kind of just don't want to do it again. It kind of feels like shit if you just think of it in your sofa. But then, obviously, if you've ever been um, in social situations before, you don't want to talk to someone. But then you meet them. You meet them anyways. You go to school anyways. You go to college anyways. You talk to them anyways. It's fine. It turns out it's fine. And like every single time, it's fine. It's just when you're ever, whenever you're thinking in a place of comfort thinking about a difficult situation it just feels like shit and then when you're actually in the environment and you're in flow almost in a social flow then it's really easy another advantage is also unfucking all of those traumas basically unfucking all of those traumas you know like I'll just give you one of my examples. So when I when I was in secondary school, in the first year of secondary school, we had a raining day and we were about to do physical education. It was PE and it was heavy rain, so we could not do our basketball, netball, football outside. And so we had to do something called... Uh, physical fitness test or it was like the obstacle course it was like a course that obstacle course that they designed like in the giant sports hall that just went all the way around and it's all different types of energies from shuttle runs to um push-ups to jumping jacks to so on so on so on bicep curls even with fucking one kg two kg and and I got a trauma from there because I was this weak guy. I was this weak, <coughs> apologies. I was this weak, chubby, quite literally disgusting. I honestly wouldn't blame the females that hate, like, for I was disgusting by then. I, looking back in pictures now, yes, I feel sorry for him and um, I'd actually do anything to help that guy, but I wasn't the best looking. I wasn't the best. I hadn't got the best charming looks and um, I kind of just looked like a like the typical Chinese nerd but chubby and I got paired up with two popular girls in the school I won't name who they are but essentially we went through this entire course I got fucked by the way I got fucking destroyed by these two women and um, especially on the runs, I was just breaking sweats. And I was like, <gasps> and then both of them was just speeding, speeding. I tried to catch up. I couldn't. The most fucking humiliate, humiliate, fuck, humiliating thing I have ever experienced. And um, a specific part of it that really, really delivered the trauma was when I was doing push-ups. When I was doing push-ups with the two popular girls, there was a third sitting on a bench. And I was doing push-ups and I couldn't do much. I couldn't do much, bro. The girls beat me on this one, bro. It couldn't be done. And as I was failing, I was just like on the floor, right? You know when, when you're pressing up, when you're about to press up and you just can't fucking press up anymore? That was the point of where I was at. And obviously the girl on the bench was like, um, what are you doing, Benji? 
and then she laughed and then that was one of the traumas and so back to the point of college you can unfuck a lot of these traumas that was just one example but i, I fucking hundreds and i just just so you know i hold those traumas as trophies i'm grateful for them they make me the man i am they make me disciplined they make me a stronger man they make they like all of these muscles honestly bro it's all traumas it's all demons that made these muscles basically and so going to college will break these traumas for you especially if you've been on self-improvement right if especially if You've been on vigorous self-improvement. You've been meditating consistently, doing many, many habits recently, like many, many habits consistently, been going to the gym consistently. You will feel that you are able to break out of your shell, break out of the mold that you've been placed under. So let's say secondary school is here, right? It's early. And then there's college. So you've been put into a shitty mold here. People think you're a weirdo. Uh, you try your best to be a sigma to gain some respect back for your fucking broken beta self. Uh, you've never talked to a fucking woman in your life. I'm talking about me, by the way. This is not like when I say you, I'm I'm talking to myself, by the way. I don't, I don't want to insult you, but could not talk to a woman. But when I did talk to a woman, it was just all fucking serious. I did not know how to. I honestly had nothing to talk about but business and like the grind. So uh even when even when I started hitting gym and I got a little bit of attraction from women in secondary school, right? I was still in that mode and it just did not work out. It just I just started talking about business shit and the grind and uh it just most of the time, right? This is a lesson learned. Most of the time, people are in conversations to have fun. That is something I learned from, I believe, charisma on command. But then I've also reinforced that in my brain through trial and error. Most of the time, conversations are for fun. And from what I noticed, if you just turn shit to talking about philosophies, business, uh, what your goals are, there aren't really any smiles anymore. It's all just serious and just thinking now. And uh, especially with a woman, that does not work. You cannot, please, please do not talk about business and philosophy and shit. Unless, unless you found yourself a 0.1% woman, a woman who is like feminine, fucking on self-improvement as well. A woman of God wants to have sex after marriage, wife material. Unless you found that woman, have every conversation as fun, basically. Be Hopefully you didn't hear that, but it's uh, my crazy neighbor next door that's um, actually a weed smoker, uh, drug addict, and um, I honestly wish I could help him, but I don't think there is much going back. There's a lot of trauma for him. I know I'm going on a side, side tangent, but there is a lot of family issues and deepest apologies, deepest fucking regards for him, but God bless him, I guess. Let God had, handle him. Fuck, what was I on? I was talking about the conversation and uh, with women and uh, whatever, right? So, assuming you have this mold of you, this mold that is everyone thinks you're the decrepit guy you're a fucking weirdo and whatever but then in the deep darkest like you're in your double life basically this this is your life right you're, you're just this fucking silent sigma guy when really you're actually a beta you practice your self-improvement to a vigorous amount because you have all of these traumas and all of these haters to prove them wrong right you fucking accelerate yourself do hours and hours of deep work wake up at 5 a.m you do that work both for your mental health for your general well-being of making sure your diet and your sleep and your um you're going to the gym and you're eat like you're meditating, 
you make sure all of that is done in the background. And from what I found from moving to college, right? I just moved like about two weeks ago. From what I found is because you are in a new environment, you have the best opportunity to make a new mold of yourself. And this new mold serves you insanely well because you get to live your true self. Just so you get the point I'm trying to make, right? I believe our most charismatic self is our true self. The the, the guy who's literally leaning on the chair like this and um, completely comfortable everywhere and charismatic hand signs everywhere, deeply breathing, not even shallowly breathing. That is, I believe, the true form of yourself. Whether you're an introvert or you're, or you're extrovert, you can still be insanely charismatic in conversations. And I believe that is the true self. You, you, I don't believe, at least me personally, I don't believe that someone can truly just be a sigma and go like, yeah, no, yeah. That is such a depressing personality and honestly, it's hard to, um, it's hard to give you the feeling of what it is to be like a truly charisma in your true version self, but just fucking help me. Essentially, what I'm just trying to say is there isn't really a sigma. There isn't. You, you can't, you can't really just sit there fucking in a take sign. No. Yeah. No, you got, you, we inherently as humans are social creatures, whether we are intro, introvert or extrovert. We love sharing stories and being charismatic and we love to win in conversation. Tell the battle, tell our battle stories, tell our traumas, tell everything good about ourselves. We love to do that. And I believe we are in our true, true self of expression. Like our true, we are, be fuck, fuck. I'm sorry. Just, let me gather my thoughts. I'm just fucking, so, oh, fucking help me. <clears throat> I believe we are in the true versions of ourself when we are in a social flow. When we are completely comfortable leaning back on the chair, talking to strangers, talking to pretty women. That is, I believe, the truest version of self-expression. And so with that, you can literally form yourself a new mold. You see how powerful that is? This, this old mold with the old people saying that you're a dork, you're a loser, you're a nerd. To this one, where you've been hitting gym, where you've been meditating for ages, you're kind of handsome now as well. You've grown up, you've got a little bit more facial, facial hair, I guess, a little bit more defined facial structure. You've grown taller, you have more of a manly look now. You dress nicer because you get to choose what you wear. You get to practice all of the things they told you on Charisma and Command. Body language analysis on YouTube. Uh, Thomas Shelby, how he walks. You get to practice all of that. You get to practice uh, the, the frame control from Charisma Command and the, 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 the loner method. You get to practice all of these insane, like these insane social skills and these social tactics from the channel Charisma and Command. And just practicing all of that that's gone into your subconscious brain from literally drilling through videos on uh, how to, how to cold approach a, a pretty girl, uh, how to, how to, uh, make a tribe of your own, how to get high value friends. 
from watching all of that and getting all of the, the good stuff from all of that into your subconscious brain, you can form a insanely good new mold for yourself. And forming this new mold, you'll be, you actually shift your identity along, pardon me, along with this new mold. What I mean is the mold is like what people think of you, right? And the identity is what you actually are. The mold, let's say you've created the new mold, right? From from loser to fucking winner, uh, charismatic, uh, loud mouth guy. Not arrogant, right? But just loud mouth, cool, calm, collected, stoic, but also uh, able to speak and confident and etc. So on. Just a good confident man and with this mode you'll be if you set it if you set it right right if you set it a little bit above your expectations as in you just got fucking out of nowhere right you're actually the first one to raise your hand and shout out loud to the teacher the answer and uh, make funny jokes uh be the guy that actually volunteers to read out someone else's paragraph if you if you do that to yourself, set higher expectations than your old identity and your old mold, then the mold will set high expectations for your identity to confirm them. So this is your mold, your new mold, and this is your identity that's about to change because of this new mold. So if you set the new mold right, as in above your threshold of social situations that you can handle so set this as a high stressful thing the mold and then that will force your identity to comply with it and then thereby creating an upward spiral and then you actually become that guy i hope that makes sense i think another point is also with the traumas right this isn't like a point in itself but let's just let's just call it an addition to the point of um, traumas and shit like uh unfucking your traumas the main traumas that i've experienced that i've unfucked is actually with pretty women i've always been okay with chatting to uh decently looking women when it's needed and uh Just made me think of uh, fucking chatting about business. It's just, oh, such a bad mistake. But yeah, <coughs> pardon me. I've been always okay with chatting to decent looking women. But if they are insanely attractive, that is where a blockage is. That is where perhaps the trauma kicks in the most. And with this new school and this this new college and this new mold, I've been severely and detrimentally able, and I'm not sure if that's the right words, but I've been able to bring myself a new mold. And I can confidently say that this has helped me. Like college has helped me to a significant amount. And uh, I just bring you a, I bring you a, quote or a certain saying from Iman Gaji himself so he said that you shouldn't really be this like sigma male guy that, that just works 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 in his teenage years to like fucking his young 20 like 23 or something 20 23 25 you shouldn't be this guy who just works and doesn't socialize of course he, he says that to talk to women he says to, to talk to a woman, not even, you don't have to do this like sexually, whatever. You just get normal with talking to a woman. Don't be this creep at 25 that's like insanely rich, but you can't talk to a woman. So what he's basically trying to say is just normalize talking to a woman, get used to it. And that really hit me when I was going into college. And um, I believe that is what college has helped me with the most. So to give you give you a quick summary on what I've covered today, I honestly 
I didn't plan to make this a uh, guide or whatever. This is just a random video because I felt like recording. Okay, so advantages of college. Breaking out of your mold, breaking out of your old um, identity, old mold. Um, able to talk, able to set a new mold for yourself and talk to attractive women. Able to insanely increase your social skills, whether with women or just generally. And that's really about it. And then the disadvantages are zero time for your business. Not not necessarily not necessarily zero, but just less time, less mental energy for your business, less time, actually zero time for your habits, zero time for reading, and um, less fulfilling workouts due to not having the time to eat before the workout, like eat two hours before the workout, and that is essentially what I covered here, I believe. If you enjoyed this video, make the best thing you could actually do to support it. If you found value from this, fuck, how do I phrase this to make it sound extremely nice? If you want to help me, just do do some sort of interaction to this video. Share it. That would be the most optimal thing. Uh, subscribe if you want. Like, dislike, comment. Just any interaction helps. And with that said, thank you so much. In a bit, bro.